Now CMV is actually in the family of herpes, and this is herpes virus number five. So this can be transmitted through the placenta or, or perinatally through the delivery. Now the worst uh, outcomes occur if this woman acquires CMV during the early part of pregnancy. Now many of you have already had CMV as a child. You didn't even know it. You're CMV positive. And it is similar to URI symptoms. May linger a little bit longer. There's a little bit more lymphadenopathy. But who's thinking CMV? We're thinking common things happen commonly. It's an upper respiratory infection. But in a pregnant woman, this should go through our mind just a little bit. So you see this long list of effects on this fetus. And when you look at this little baby on the right, does this look like a normal child? No, this baby has microcephaly. The ears are normal, the nose, the nose is normal, but look at that head, and you know that this brain is affected. These babies are hypotonic. They're very difficult to feed because they have poor sucking reflex. There's all sorts of things that goes on with this child. Herpes. Now, herpes can be either type 1 or type 2. So 80% of herpes 1 occurs on the lips, mouth area, 20% on the genitalia. 80% of the lesions that occur on the genitalia are type 2, and 20% of those on the mouth are type 2. So this can be transferred to the baby perinatally at the time of delivery and it can also be acquired by contact after the ruptured membrane so if a woman has a history of herpes and she ruptures membranes part of our patient education in the outpatient offices you go to L and D right away the baby can also acquire it by direct contact. So let's say that she has a herpes type 2 on her mouth and the baby comes out and she has an active lesion and she starts kissing that baby, there is a possibility. And We actually had a set of twins where mother had herpes all over her face. It was a horrible outbreak and we didn't let her take those babies home. We just took care of them until they all crusted over. So when you look at these pictures it's not good for this baby. You see all that peeling skin, and this is like a burn. And so this baby has a lot of risk, and the baby will be uh, put in isolation and be in a NICU. So what we do for this is we screen the mother during the last few weeks of pregnancy. So hopefully we know that she has a history of it. Hopefully she doesn't acquire it while she is pregnant. And we'll do an HSV culture. At the time that she's admitted to labor and delivery, we have to do a very careful examination of the vulva and then we'll do a speculum exam and look in the vagina, look at the cervix to see if there's any active lesions. And most of the time these women are just given a c-section because the risk to this baby is too high. So that's it on herpes. Now some of the other viral illnesses the parvovirus B19, if it's acquired during pregnancy, it can lead to miscarriage, it can lead to a stillbirth, it can cause fetal anemia. This fetal anemia can lead to high drops fetalis, similar to um, RH disease. And about 10% of women who become infected before 20 weeks end up losing their baby. But the loss may not be, she may acquire it at 10 weeks, but she may not lose that baby till 28 weeks. And that is very devastating to the mother. So fewer than 1% of the babies whose mothers get infected after mid-pregnancy actually have problems due to this infection. So we just want them to avoid anybody with a rashy illness. Hepatitis B is another thing that we screen for prenatally. And if her hepatitis B surface antigen is positive, then the baby will get the Hbig vaccine and the hepatitis B vaccine at birth. So this one we're going to give right in the delivery room. Uh, breastfeeding is okay for this um, couplet as long as the newborn receives the vaccine. 
And prevention, as always, is the key to um, exposure to the fetus. Is let's not have the mother be hepatitis B positive. So the last thing we're going to talk about is varicella. And varicella is one of the illnesses. You should all know that varicella is chicken pox. She just finished peds. Okay. Now what's important in pregnancy is that we can have an equally devastating outcome for the mother. If she was to have varicella in a pregnancy, it can be just as bad for the mother as it is to the baby. 20% of women who have varicella during pregnancy develop pneumonia. And of these 20%, 40% die from it. So this is really bad. If she develops var varicella in the late first trimester or into the second trimester, there's a chance that the baby can be born with defects known as congenital varicella syndrome. And they'll be low birth weight, they can have scarring on their skin, similar to what you may have had when you had varicella as a child. And then the other time that we worry about varicella in the pregnancy is if she has chicken pox within five days before delivery to two days after delivery. Because this baby has a high chance that they will have a neonatal death as high as 30% because of that exposure to the chicken pox. So prevention is key. Vaccinate this patient for varicella prior to pregnancy and then avoid exposure to any form of rashy illnesses. So this ends this series of lectures on concurrent disorders in pregnancy.